Hello audience. In this video I'm going to show you the repairs I had to make with the wood on this and I'm going to make and install the trim panels. Now, on the left side of the body, there's supposed to be a piece of wood going across here. And as we can see from the discoloration, there was one there originally. So, I made a new one. And now, here's the inside of the body, which most of the work has already been done. Now, to start with, this tack strip. I got a set of new end caps and made this part of it new to match it and I kind of blended it down to match the old tack strip and this will all be a lot smoother when it's finished. I can adjust this with padding. Now just about every bolt on this thing was loose including ones down here so I took them off, replaced the lock washers and tightened them down so now they're a lot more solid now. The bolts holding the top saddle bracket on, they were loose and they didn't have lock washers on them. Now this is kind of a general rule with Model T's. The bolts, if they don't have lock washers or cotter pins or nylock nuts or if they're not swedged or if they don't have something forcing them to stay tight, they will rattle loose. And that's what happened to these. So I put lock washers on each of them and tightened them down. Over on the left side, the tack strip was all busted up here, so I replaced this section of it. And I installed the top saddle bracket for this side. Again, all installed with lock washers. And the same thing with the tack strip here. Now some of these screws down here just needed to be tightened up a little bit but there was not much anything wrong with them. The rest of it looks pretty good. So the only thing left to do is the backrest support, which I'm working on right now. Now one thing I found very interesting on this car is because it was built in 1925, the bracing for the cowl section, it's all steel. This upright here is steel, the post here is steel, it's got a steel channel here, and there's no wood. On the 1924 and earlier bodies, this was all wood across here, this framing. This part is also different, and from the research I've done, apparently this was one year only. This is unique to 1925. Which I found somewhat interesting. I've never seen one apart like this. So if you're wondering what the 1925 bodies look like inside, this is it. In addition to that, there's also a channel here to hold the trim panel. And down here, there's also a few tabs up here to hold it. So this uses a completely different trim panel than the 24 and earlier cars. Now here's the left side of the body. Kind of the same design. The only difference is it's got a wood post here. Because it's holding the rest of the body together. Now here we have the left front trim panel that was on it. Now at first I thought this was original, but the trim was done wrong, so clearly isn't. However, it is done about the same way the originals were. What they call proxylin coated cardboard, which is just a piece of panel board that 
was textured to look like the material they used on the seats and then painted with some kind of upholstery grade paint and they didn't last very long they usually just fell apart with the weather as you can see like this one is doing they did have a vinyl edge binding sewn around the edges like this one to keep the ends from fraying this probably seems like a really cheap tacky way to make trim panels and it is but you gotta keep in mind this car sold new for less than three hundred dollars and this was one of the ways they were keeping the price down and here's the new one I just made now I chose to do like most restorers I covered it with a layer of vinyl the same material we're using on the seats it's gonna make it more durable and a little more fancy I didn't bother to put any edge binding around here because where the trim goes you wouldn't notice it anyway I did run a stitch around it where it's not going to be nailed down so that functionally it does the same thing as the edge binding and around here you don't really see it when it's installed anyway And now let's talk about the trim that goes around the panels. Now in the past, for most of these cars, I used this, which I make myself. It's just a sheet of vinyl that's been rolled over and sewn. I copied this from various show cars that I've seen over the years, presuming that's the right stuff. And with some of the early cars, it probably is. On this car, I found this little piece of the original trim under the armrest and it's got a core inside of it on one end and it has no stitching it's glued together or molded together so I ordered this from Snyder's Antique Auto Parts it's about the same size the core is about the same size even the grain on them is almost the same so this is a pretty good replacement for the original trim used at that time and I'm securing it down with these trim nails that I got from Restoration Supply Company in Escondido. And the head is a bit larger than the original, but still looks pretty authentic. And now we're ready to install the trim panel for good. Now, this piece of wood up top here was setting in a little further than the sheet metal, so I nailed a piece of panel board to it. So the panel will lay flat and won't get pushed in when we start nailing it down.
So the trim panels are done now. The only thing left to do is the door check strap, which I'll worry about later. The next big part of the interior to do, which is also the last big part of it, is the backrest, which I'm currently working on right now. And you'll see that in another video. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.